My name is Peter Hegland, Peter with a D. I'm from, I live in Minnesota, Sartell, near Sartell, Minnesota, central Minnesota. And I was at Pond Farm, was a student at Pond Farm the last five years of the school, 76 through 80. I attended Luther College and, I mean, there's a, there's a long story about uh, that, but I, I'm one of these people who was doing something completely different. I was a chemistry major and then took a pottery class and fell in love with clay and at, at, Luther, at College. Luther College. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and because of Dean's connection with Marguerite, I, I was then on this track to, uh, event, uh, it was almost like a downhill run to end up here eventually. A lot of things happened, for, fortuitous things happened to allow me to eventually get here. And when you were at Luther College, uh, was it one of the times that Marguerite visited campus and taught a workshop? She came when I was um, a student, uh, one of my first years, but I, I didn't attend that one, but some friends of mine did, and so I sort of got a, a little bit of a sense of what it was. And, and then after I became really interested in Clay, she came back again. And so then I, the first time I ever met her, had a face-to-face -face, uh, encounter with her was during that, her, that seminar. What was your very first impression of her? Well, I mean, Dean Schwartz, who was the teacher at Luther, really put her on a high pedestal, almost like a goddess. And, uh, and so um, she was an, an impressive personality before, in that sense, before I even met her. But uh, she, she had a presence about her that's like no one else I ever met, uh, kind of a power and um, gravitas. Well, I don't, I don't, we wouldn't, didn't connect on a personal level, but I saw that this was an important, serious person and, you know, but, and also, uh, you know, some, somebody you wanted to be associated with, especially if you're going to study pottery. I just knew that she was a master of her craft and art. And, you know, by the time I studied with her, she was in her 80s, so she had a whole lifetime and, and of amassing skill and knowledge and and that I was just, you know, I was a 20-year-old and know nothing about anything. And, and I just, you know, I knew that if I could, if she was willing and I could spend time with her, that I could learn a lot. You know, I was so clueless about, and it was such a new world to me. Um, and like I said, so many fortuitous things happened to me that perhaps my, my path was tunnel vision, but... Um, you know, after later on in my life, I tried to expand out my horizons. But during that time, I was just very centered on on this, and that, I didn't need anything else. The first year I came, I flew out, and I I really, you know, I I knew other people who had been here, but I didn't I didn't know that much about the actual place and. Being from the Midwest, I mean, coming here is like <clears throat> so exotic, you know. I remember flying into San Francisco at night, and I met another uh, uh, guy who was um, at Deneen's. That's another story because we all came out as a workshop the, my first year, and and you know he picked me up at the airport, and he had. Uh, there was the lights of San Francisco. It was at night, and there was he had jazz playing on the radio, and I was like, "Where am I?" And this is, you know, this is like another world, and it was just really exciting. You know, there was there was tension of not knowing, um, being there for the first time, and meeting Marguerite and everything. But it, you know, she it was a well-oiled machine between her and David Stewart, and they, you know, it all went smoothly, and. Um, yeah, um, I, you know, I was assigned to this to this little room. Everybody else in this in, in the Deneen team was in the the room where Marguerite's wheel was, and there was like enough spaces there for everybody else. But I got put back in the little 
room next to it where I was kind of by myself. And, but I found out that I liked it there, and so I, I was in that spot all five years that I, was, that I studied. How did being at Pond Farm different from being uh, in the classroom at Luther College? <clears throat> the problem with, I mean, in, in, in some ways it was, it was similar because Dean tried the best he could to recreate the atmosphere at Luther, but the structure of a college class and a college is, you know, two-hour classes. And although Dean kept the tried to keep the building open all the time so you could go back and work, in college it's very hard to just put in the hours, especially to learn to go. The beginning part of pottery, you just have to put in hours, kind of like learning to play the piano or something, but. Pond Farm, you know, it was it was eight in the morning till three p.m. every day, and just with a few breaks, but constant. So there was more time, more time, and more. You know, only twenty some students and two very um, excellent teachers, and so you got more personal uh, attention and, and more time to work and you didn't have to worry about anything else. I mean, it was really, it's really a perfect situation for focusing in on something that, that you wanted to do, that you wanted to learn about. And, and with, you know, a master, two masters actually. I mean, we, it was a very special situation that I started with because for, for a number of reasons. And the first thing is I was, I was there toward the end of the thing, and by then there were, I think in my year there weren't any beginners, and from then on there never were. So, I mean, in the traditional pond farm training, you know, if you came in as a beginner, she would take you through what they were called, it was called the steps, and that was to teach you a vocabulary of the, the skills and, that you, and, and, uh, and shapes that you, before and so then you could go on from that and be more creative. So to just kind of learn the basics first. But I had done that at Luther with Dean and she didn't want, you know, she didn't want to mess with that anymore by then. So she, I didn't have to, I never did the steps at Pond Farm. In a way I'm, I'm sad about that because I think she, it would have, I would have learned it a little more thoroughly or I'm sure I would have, but that be that as it may. So. And, and then she was doing this experiment with Peter Deneen about teaching a whole group at once, you know, with the idea that, you know, we were all working as a, as a team on, under Peter back in St. Paul. And she, they, she wanted to see if we trained all together, if we could become like a creative workshop team, um, which, which turns out to be an almost impossible thing to do in today's world. Uh, nobody can do it. I mean, it can last for a short time, but everybody's too independent and there's too many financial pressures and things. So people end up either being, for the most part, either being very small, like one or two people, or very big, like the studio that Peter has now. And to be in between is real difficult. So again, the question, where did you start and where did you end up? So what were you making when you were there year one as compared to year five? I think I, may, I might have started with a, a problem like um, Sherry servers or something. And that's a, uh, I don't know if that was the first thing, but maybe the, for that first year. So that's a kind of a, a small uh, serving piece with a, with a small top and a, and a lip and a handle, and then a little cup to go with it. And the two things should relate to each other, uh, uh, both in shape, and also if you were gonna put a decoration on, then the decoration had to relate. And, and you know, it sounds like a simple problem, but it's really a sculptural problem uh, with two things that, that relate to each other sculpturally and in other ways. It, plus it had to pour well, the handle had to feel good you know so that's that's the kind of problems we did and it could be anything it could be you know more complicated thing would be a teapot or 
and and or and then you know we moved into other areas um, like we we made we made tiles you would um, a problem would be to go out and find a branch from the fig tree for example that and it, but it and it had to be a formful branch that that was interesting you know to look at and and had different elements that were interesting. And then you'd come back, do a drawing of it, and then do a, a, a relief tile from it. And which then that's a difficult problem. And um, so I took a stab at that. And and there were you know there were other more complicated things where you 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 can you know might might make a, make a set of things um, a breakfast set you know or something like that. And her, the, the aim was always to get you to tackle something new and, and um, challenging, challenge yourself in another way. And, and, uh, um, and so but, but usually Marguerite might suggest something, but it, the longer you, you were there, you could have, you'd, she'd give you a little more freedom to, or she might ask you what, you know, what, you wanted to tackle, and then you'd have a little dialogue about it.